Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be talking about a feature in Sitecore called the OData Item Service. Um, it's a great tool for accessing Sitecore content. Um, if you're trying to potentially either do this from another application or if you're trying to access it from your own application, being that it's some sort of JavaScript application, uh, such as uh, Angular or if you have just a, a regular JavaScript a service where you just need some pieces of data from Sitecore asynchronously uh, after page load uh, for some reason. First, we're we're not going to go too far into the topics of the item data or the OData item service in too far of length. So I'm going to show some of the queries. I'm also going to show how to create an API key and sh show how to use that API key to make a request to this service. You can theoretically use no API key with this service. Uh, you can have anonymous access to it, but uh, I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, you're opening up the opportunity for uh, ways for your system to be hacked or, or data to be pulled that you might not necessarily want somebody to use or pull. Um, I'm not gonna go too much into the, the options, the fields that you can pull uh, using the service. Uh, so for example, if you want to pull all the fields from an item in this service, you definitely can do that. And that's probably where one of the areas where you wouldn't want somebody outside the company necessarily pulling and knowing all the users of your system because they could use those users, figure out who they are, and potentially build some sort of password cracker and uh, potentially hack uh, into your Sitecore instance. Just one uh, scenario where they could malici maliciously attack your system. So to get started, uh, let's go ahead and create that API key. So if we go to, uh, first we're logged into my commerce.se instance locally. This is a 902 instance of Sitecore. So I'm not using the latest version of 9.1 with commerce, uh, just an older version of 902 with commerce. And you don't need commerce to run this either. It just so happens that I'm running a commerce instance uh, just for all my demonstration videos I'll be doing over the next couple of months. So to access and add API keys, either to access existing ones or to view current ones, all you have to do is go to your core database, um, which happens pretty instantaneously. You're not going to get any feedback that you're actually in the core, other than the fact that you have a question mark SE underscore content equals core. So now we're just going to go to the content editor, and now we're in the core side of of our system. The core represents a database that is running uh, behind the scenes. So if we go to system, settings, services, API keys, we'll see that I actually already created one earlier, but there was one already existing for commerce. Um, we're just going to create a new one. I'm going to create a OData item API key. And I'm going to call this demonstration two. And uh, so there's going to be some settings that you can specify. The first one is the database. So what database do you want this to access? I would say the most common scenario is that you want this to access your web database. Let's say you're wanting to pull content that's been published out. Um, this is where you could access that data and, and pull it into some sort of service that you're running. Maybe you're building a mobile application and you want to pull in your content items into your mobile application. This would represent something you could configure here. Um, so I'll type in web, but you could theoretically build, be building a, a module for the marketplace that needs some sort of form of data to do something. I, I don't know what, I'm just saying what's possible. And you might select the master database instead. And you could package these up into your uh, Sitecore module package that then would allow you to access the O item, the O data item service, uh, just using, just by having this mentioned and injected into your instance on the module install installation process. Search filter is just the default search filtering across the entire API. Whatever you specify here would be the filtering that would be carried over across the entire thing. So by default, it's set to is latest version equals true. So it's gonna always pull the most recent latest version of your content into your result set which I think is not worth changing in this instance. 
but you might want to you know get all the versions or uh, there there could be a lot of scenarios where you might want more than just the latest version so the the cores origin uh, this is just your content security policy i'm not going to change anything with this but this is where you can specify that allowed controllers uh, this is where you can specify specific controllers that you want it to pull data from we're not going to specify any so i'm just going to use the star so it's a wild card uh, in person impersonation user uh, by default if you don't specify it, it's going to be uh, api user or something like that let me just yeah services api so if i don't specify it it would not it would just default to this anyways but i would like to just go ahead and specify it so it's just going to be this user is what all the uh, traffic is going to mimic is going to be as if it's coming from services api user and then there's throttling strategy i'm not going to go into that topic today either um, so that's pretty much the configuration of our api key so let's just save this change. And because it's a core database, there's no such thing as publishing or anything like that. As soon as you save this item, uh, any instance that is running inside your, your setup is going to be have access to this. What we need to start making requests using this API key is just the item, item ID. So we'll copy that. And then the rest of this video, I'm just gonna be using my Postman to just mimic and show us some of the queries that we're gonna potentially be using. So I'm gonna open this up, and now we have basically a bunch of gets um, that we're gonna be running to get the data that we're looking for. So we have the API key. Um, now, how do we use that API key to start querying data? So there's two ways. Uh, the API key can be used in a query string for each request uh, to get that data. Uh, if you don't provide the API key, um, it's not gonna work. So for example, uh, if I remove the, or just uncheck this option of the API key, which I'm gonna explain here in a second, it's not going to return any data. It's gonna basically fail. But once we check the option, it's going to work. It's gonna return data. So there's two ways. The first I said was the query string, which is via this tab. Um, there's also another way which is in the headers themselves, um, which I would say is my preferred method to provide the API key. And to do that, all you have to do is do SC underscore API key and then provide the GUID as the value. Now, um, since I'm using Postman, um, I'm using a concept called variables. I'm not gonna go too far into Postman configuration, but if you're creating these Postman tests, what you can do is go to edit for a collection that you have and you can go to the variables tab and you can provide variables that then you can reuse via throughout your collections and the endpoints that you're defining. I had already defined this previously as this value, but I'm actually going to change this to the one we just created. And we're just going to take off the curly braces and then we're going to update. So this is using my new a, uh, API endpoint uh, key that I just defined, whereas the other value was actually using the API key, the demonstration one that you saw in the list. That's what that API key was for. So we're all good to go. All these tests are using the headers and they're using a SE underscore API key. And then they're using the variable, not the, the specific value. That way I don't have to go since I just generated a new key, I don't have to go for all these endpoints and change that value to match to an API key that I just got. I can just use the variable and then just change it one spot. Like I said, I'm not gonna go into the nuances of Postman, but that's something to keep in mind if you're trying to reduce the amount of uh, copy and paste that you're gonna have to potentially do. So the different types of queries, uh, like I said, I'm not gonna go too far into defining very or uh, field names or things like that where you can you can definitely provide different uh, fields that you want it to display potentially either display extra ones or even potentially remove extra fields uh, you can display standard values standard fields things like that in this session i'm just going to show some of the options that you have in in order to pool data um, so the first one is let's say we just want to get the home item of our content tree so if we switch back to our master database and we go to the content editor, we're not actually gonna pull this item, we're gonna pull the storefront home item, the one we use for commerce. 
And so we're gonna pull this, and then we're gonna do a bunch of things, uh, either pulling this item or, or various other things. So if we go back, uh, the home item by good. So basically we're doing a query where we use the good of that item that we just had, or the item I had selected. We're passing it in as a good, and then we're just gonna run this, and it's gonna get that item. So if I just do send, this is that item, Psychor content, Psychor storefront, home, that's what that item represents. Uh, because we specified in our API key definition that all our queries should have a filter of is latest version, you notice that this says it's true. So all our queries should have this set to true. Um, notice that there's not a whole lot of other data here as well since I haven't specified any additional fields. So that's one option that we have. We have another option where you, we can actually get that item by its path instead. Um, so you can just do slash site core, slash content, slash site core, slash storefront. Actually, this is not the correct item. I want, I didn't realize when I was, when I was creating these uh, queries, but I want the home item inside the storefront. So if I send that, now we're getting the home item. So before, if I hadn't changed that, it's gonna get just the storefront item, if that makes sense. So that's, these are relatively simple queries that we have. If I go to this one, other options we have, we can get the parent. So we're doing by the GUID again. If I do send, this gets the parent item, which is that storefront item I just showed. Um, it's just gonna go up one level and get that item. Another option is to get children. So you just do slash aggregate or basically Sitecore API SSC, which is stands for Sitecore Services Client, aggregate content items, pass in your GUID and, and slash children. Uh, you, you do that and you get all the children that are a part of that item, which is quite a few, um, a part of that home item. And, and if there isn't any children item, it would not return anything. It would just be an empty collect or an empty result. In addition, you have some other options. Uh, you can return content items by language just by passing a query string parameter of language equals ENAU or EN whatever language that you have. Kind of a similar problem to most language uh, inside Sitecore. Even if I don't necessarily have a ENAU version in my content tree, it's still gonna say I do. That's kind of a misleading uh, thing about Sitecore. We can also do by version. So let's say um, I have 50 versions. I just wanna get the most recent version. I know it's version 50. So I can actually pass in version equals uh, 50 potentially. In this instance, I have two. I don't actually have a second version. Um, so if I run this, it's not gonna return anything because I, like I said, I don't have a second version to this home item. But if I did, it would return that second version of that um, home item. Um, and in addition to all that, you also have the ability to do some content search API type queries with the OData item service. Uh, in this instance, what I'm doing is I'm, instead of specifying the GUID for the item I wanna pull, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a search for basically a filter for all the items that have name that's equal, which is their their item name, that's equal to home. And I've noticed that this doesn't necessarily just return all results that are exactly matching home. It will return some that are not exactly. So if I do that query search, um, you'll notice this is exactly home. This one is exactly home, but this one is home carousel. Um, so it, it kind of weights the ones that are exact match first, and then it starts kind of giving ones that aren't exactly what you're searching for. And then if we go further down, you can now also do order by. I believe all searches you can do ordering by. In this example, I'm still doing the content search API search for all items that have the name home, um, but I'm sorting them by created. So or created date essentially is what that represents. So if I do send, um, this is all the results, but they're sorted by their created date. You can actually do a uh, created descending as well. All you have to do is do a space and then under uh, lowercase d e s c uh, to represent descending, and then you can do that as well. So this is actually a slightly different item than before. See, it's 2019 046. This was the most recent, and this was quite a ways back. It's 2017, uh, November 9th. So 
Actually, no, that's not the right item. Helps if I go all the way up. Uh, 28, 2008, uh, April 7th. So that's pretty a long time ago. It's because the Sitecore content home is so old. And then lastly, the last search I have, you can actually do it order by, by multiple fields and even potentially multiple fields with descending as well. So if I do send, you'll see, it's hard to tell, but it's gonna do it by create date first, which is gonna do this, and then it's gonna do name descending, which uh, is hard to show or represent in this because there's gonna be so many things that are um, not exactly what you're looking for. So that pretty much concludes today's video. Um, I was thinking about doing one on the pagination options as well, but I was having some weird issues with it where it wasn't actually paginating or there's basically, there is a top and a skip. And basically the top would allow you to say, uh, show me the top results, limit the result set by this count. Uh, so you could say pass in 10, for example, that's typically the page count or uh, page size that you might use in a, if, if you're coding this out. So you'd pass in 10. So each page is potentially worth 10. And then the skip is another variable that you can pass in with the same format. So it's all uh, the dollar sign and then skip or dollar sign top equals. Uh, so skip is a number that you can pass in as well. So you could say, potentially you could say 10 and 10. So 10 top and 10 skip. So it would show you the 10 next 10 results um, after the first 10 are excluded essentially. So it will show you if it was top 10 and then it was skip zero, it would show you zero through 10 results. Then if it's 10, 10, it would show you 10 through 20 results. If it was 10, 20, then it would show you 20 through 30 results, if that makes sense. And theoretically you could use that for that as well. But that's it for today's session. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Uh, please feel free to subscribe to this channel as I'll have uh, future updates on this topic or on other Sitecore topics uh, or Azure or anything else. Um, all right, that's it.